Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. Just want to apologise in advance for the sun. In case the sun gets in your eyes, it's that time of the afternoon and it could happen. This video, how to fix a spongy brake pedal. So if you've got a spongy brake pedal, basically one of the main causes when you've got a problem and that's a vehicle that say doesn't normally have a spongy brake pedal and you've got a spongy brake pedal, it may be just a case of, you know, you've got a problem and, you know, like the master cylinder, probably be a common one in some makes and models of cars, master cylinder's leaking and you get a bit of air in the system, that's one way, that's supposing nobody's worked on it lately, if you know what I mean, so a bit of air in the system, so spongy pedal, Put it simple air in the system so you've got some air in the system if you have worked on it lately maybe you've opened up the system and some air's got in there and you haven't bled it out properly so if that's the case if you've worked on it lately it's since you worked on it it's got a spongy pedal well it's because you've got air in the system you need to bleed all the air out okay and there's a lot of precautions with bleeding brakes so it's not just you know and a lot of people that should know better don't know some basics as well and you can actually do more damage if you're not um, using the correct procedures you know so and I'll just quickly touch on what that is because you go well what's that so you know you've got normal sort of pedal retention when you push the pedal down it's got a normal amount of travel that it goes down when you've got air in the system of course or the bleed is open the pedal will go down further but is the master cylinder used to going to that length of travel all the way down there? No, it's not. Has it done it for the last five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, or 25 or 30 years? Probably hasn't. So when you push it that far, you're basically just pushing those piston, the, the seals on the pistons, those cups, over all that muck and grime and whatever. It's not probably going to be really bad, but it can be enough that it just upsets the seal, it could damage the seal, it could be something then under the seal that creates a leak, right? These are the sorts of things that can happen. So always try and only push the pedal, bleed it, only, you know, only push it down the normal amount of travel when you're bleeding it, right? You get me? So only push it down the normal amount of travel. Um, so, you know, you go down and you release it and you come back up, you know, you come back up once you get to that normal where it would normally go down to okay so avoid causing a problem okay so if you've done some work lately and you've pushed it all the way down maybe you've caused a problem so quite often problems are in the master cylinder right um, that is if there's no air so if you've let air in by taking a brake line off and haven't bled it out properly or anything so air's your problem you want to get the air out we're going to come around this bend here we're going to be facing into the sun a little bit see so i apologize in advance but it doesn't matter about the view enjoy the view i am but you're just gonna to have to bear with me with that sun over that side there sorry about that anyway you can start listening and stop looking right because i'll let you know when to come back and enjoy the view again but at the moment not that exciting so how to get rid of a spongy pedal that's kind of like you know you may have caused a problem or possibly when things just get old they haven't had regular brake fluid changes so we should mention brake fluid should be changed every two years that is you know re-bleeding through the whole system call it replacing brake fluid if you like draining it out of the reservoir refilling it and bleeding it through the whole system okay fresh fluid brake fluid is hygroscopic it absorbs moisture so the boiling point reduces so that's one problem that's why your braking won't be as you be coming down those hills so that's different, that's spongy pedal, that's brake fade, that's not what we're really talking about here, we're talking about a general spongy pedal. So let's use a bit of an example here, right? You know, all the later vehicles with traction control, they've got a different sort of master cylinder and you probably A, haven't experienced it yet and may not for a while because it's a different system, but you may, let's see what happens in time. But generally something like a 120 Prado, it's not that the, speed, the pedal's spongy, or oh, we're gonna come around a left turn, even more into that sun terrible okay you're not going to like that anyway coming around into it um how to fix it so one of you we just sort of touched on that one of the biggest ways you can improve your brake pedal and make it less spongy or a better pedal feel if you like is bleeding the brakes so changing the brake fluid okay it's amazing the difference it makes I remember when I used to service many vehicles, 
vehicles and get feedback from customers on where next time back or they might even have just shoot me a text message sort of thing to let me know oh the vehicle is so much better now what did you do to the brakes and all I've done is the periodic brake fluid replacement no pads or rotors nothing else has been changed so I suppose at five minutes in that's your biggest answer to this video change the brake fluid now quite often there's some people sitting there I'm not saying you're wrong going oh you know you can upgrade your brake lines to braided lines and all that sure you can do that but I'm just not sure that that's solving your problem you know what's happening at the same time as you get rid of those dirty old brake lines and you're bleeding your brakes right brake fluid so brake fluid is probably making the biggest difference then I'm not saying that better quality different diameter stronger because they've got braiding over them geez they look good anyway and you know someone's got to spin a dollar somehow um, I'm not saying they don't help because I don't know if they do or don't help but I can't say that um, when you put your foot on the brake the brake line what, what are you suggesting that the stock standard OEM brake lines are stretching like a balloon when I press my foot on the brake and the braided ones aren't all that braiding around there makes it stronger so it holds it in tighter dreaming you know that's not happening the brake hoses the OEM brake hoses they're not flat you know they're not they're gonna flex with your suspension and when you turn and all that but they're not like stretching like a balloon or anything and then the braiding makes it stronger no I don't believe that right but then I don't fit braided brake lines right but I can tell you if you believe that it's probably you're believing a myth and the new brake fluids what made the difference so the answer still changing your brake fluid now what's the other thing that can make a difference once you get your pads and everything get worn down a couple of things happen so you've got some wear you've got some grooves so you haven't got an awesome surface anymore so ideally you want a nice flat rotor and a nice flat brake pad you've got a, a good sort of um, even mating surface you know flat to flat you're going to get the most grip and pedal the, the feel there because it's working and obviously new brakes they're less glaze so a little bit more friction if you know what I mean um, depending what pads and rotors you use this is another factor okay so when you um, change your pads and rotors that's going to improve it a little bit and because you've got thicker pads right so straight away it works better and it works better once they're hotter because pads that are more then it's not really about this in this video but see where it goes right you know but it, it is to do with it a little bit right the thicker your pads okay they stay cooler right so the thinner pads they get hot faster the material gets hotter there's less material there to dissipate the heat and they of course they wear faster as well then right it's all part of it but we're not really talking about where we're talking about how to get the pedal better so number one the biggest thing is a brake fluid change right always considering have you worked on it lately and is there air in the system okay is there air in the system because if you've worked on it cause the problem or if there's air in the system and you're bleeding and you constantly got air coming out you've probably got a leak or a problem somewhere which quite commonly would be at your master cylinder depending what vehicle on older cars we're talking general general torque right master cylinder sometimes it could be at a caliper or a piston seal on a caliper but that's rare we don't see that you know i've worked on cars and brakes for a long time generally you don't see that hey get you guessed it until somebody's worked on it okay when somebody works on it that's a different story okay you know once someone's worked on it oh you know they sold your brakes and they said oh we need to rebuild your calipers and you know you probably didn't really but you, but you went for it and you got the calipers rebuilt and then they've done one of those awesome jobs for you and caused a problem so just be careful where you take your car now we're facing away from the sun so we've got that awesome view back if you've got nothing better to look at now's the time to focus on the picture i'm enjoying it i hope you are too just an awesome day anyway brake fluid okay so you could replace your pads and rotors you're going to get full thickness nice flat surface and a nice bit of friction choose your pads wisely okay we won't do that in this video a brake fluid change i wouldn't personally i wouldn't bother upgrading brake lines whatever you know to braid the lines or anything like that i wouldn't bother with that all stock standards fine now you need to check your calibers too you know you're not a brake specialist so take it to someone that knows what they're doing don't try and become a brake specialist when you know it's a matter of life and death at the end of the day you know um 
you know, you, you do something wrong and the car doesn't stop, you, your family or someone else, someone's going to get killed maybe. So just be aware of that, okay? So um, just make sure it's all done right. So pads, rotors, new brake fluid, pick your pads. That's a big part of it. And make sure you, you know, so let's eliminate. If you haven't caused any problems, you haven't worked on it lately and you just want to improve your brake pedal, I'd go first with the brake fluid flush because that's the cheapest. Sorry, we turn the other way again. We've got that sun. You can just go to listening, not looking. So, brake fluid flush. Brake fluid's cheap, mate. Even if you pay full price, ten bucks or five hundred mils or whatever, and you go and buy two or three bottles and cost you thirty bucks or even fifty bucks. So you went and bought a five litre. I don't know. You probably get that for fifty bucks anyway, or whatever. And you put all this brake fluid fluid. You bleed it. Make sure you know what you're doing. Maybe we'll do another video on that. Maybe we've already done a video. I can't remember. Just be careful who you listen to. Like I said, watch my videos, careful who else you listen to. There's good guys out there doing videos. There's a lot of bad information out as well. People that aren't qualified, they're not that intelligent and they are giving the wrong information or missing important parts in between, right? So make sure you know what you're doing before you bleed brakes. That's the first thing, new brakes. Let's see how that goes. You might make a decent improvement. If you've got fairly new brakes, you don't want to just throw them away. That's wasteful. The next thing is, maybe try a new set of pads and rotors. The two things. If you've still got an abnormally spongy brake pedal, you can't bleed it out, you've got new fluid, you've got new pads and rotors. If you've got drum brakes, they may need adjustment. If it's drum brakes, it could be all to do with the adjustment, okay? And the last thing is, yeah, you're back to your master cylinder, which, you know, once they get older, they can have some problems. You want to know your best maintenance to avoid these problems? Bleed the brake fluid, change it out. With Toyotas, it's every 40,000 k's on those services. If you're doing low kilometres, this is something that needs to be done every two years, right? I wouldn't mind if it's even every 18 months. It all depends how you use the vehicle as to how important it is as far as brake fade and the boiling point of the brake fluid. Um, but, um, look, you know, I suppose, really, that's about it. I think that's answered your question. You don't need braided brake lines. Don't waste money on pads and rotors if they're fairly new. Give the brake fluid a bleed. If you've done some work recently, mate, you may have caused a problem. Get that air out of the system, you know. What did you do? You popped your axles out to change your seal and you quickly bled the brakes. But maybe that bit of air where you had the line off and it, it slowly went backwards up the line. I don't know, you know. Every brake system's different and they have little complications like that. That's why it really, you know, you should, if you can, when it's brakes, take it to someone that knows what they're doing, okay? All right, guys, that's it. That's how to fix a spongy brake pedal. Hope that was helpful. If it was, or at least if you enjoyed the view for the part where the sun wasn't in your eyes, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe and turn that bell on so you don't mix the miss, mix, mix, miss the next important information. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.